Rust. I feel like I've been discussing Rust coming to the Linux kernel for ages now. And to be honest, I kind of have been. Back in those early stages, it was kind of unclear when or even if this was going to be merged into the kernel. And then a few releases back, there was some talk, some whispering about 6.1 being the first mainline release containing Rust. Now, this wasn't the first estimated shipping date. So, you know, maybe it'll happen. Maybe it won't happen. A couple of days ago, 6.1 finally came out affectionately named Herder I'm a Ninja Sloth. And this reality finally happened. Rust support came to the Linux kernel with a giant asterisk. Now, as an overview of the Rust for Linux project, it's still in a fairly early stage. The head developer has this to say. The Rust support is still considered to be experimental. However, support is good enough that kernel developers can start working on the Rust abstractions for subsystems and write drivers and other modules. But in this case of 6.1, not everything that's been done so far is being merged. That would be kind of a giant mess to just throw all of that into the kernel if it's going to get stripped out at some point if it doesn't work out or anything like that. So in this instance, all the facilities introduced are part of the Rust core. They do not interact with the seaside in new major ways, no new C types used, only string land, memcher, additional error codes and some printk format strings. So in 6.1, it is not ready to start shipping drivers out to the users. This is sort of like a Hello World stage where it's enough to kind of work with to make sure the environment is working, but not enough to do any serious work. You just make sure that Rust can like fit in the kernel and then go from there. And it's been known for quite a while that this is pretty much what had to be done. Besides the fact the patch set is quite large and is just going to take some time to check over, make sure it's not introducing any major faults, things like that. But also, it's a whole different language from C. The kernel is a huge project with a lot of stakeholders. Since the beginning, it was clear that adding a second main language to the kernel would be both a technical and management challenge. All of the developers in the kernel right now are C developers. Maybe some of them have Rust experience as well, but this has been a C project for its entire life. So it's going to take some time to like work out how it's going to fit into the kernel, how different sections are going to handle using Rust code, what it is going to be used for, what it's not going to be used for, all of this fun stuff. But it's not like all of these technical and managerial issues suddenly need to be dealt with out of nowhere. Because while I say that Rust has just been merged into the kernel, what I mean is it's just been merged into a mainline kernel. Virtually all the code has been in Linux Next for months and was part of the Rust patch series before the trimming down. So Linux Next sort of treat it like the... Linux experimental branch. This is the cutting edge of the cutting edge. When things first get merged into Linux, they make their way into Linux Next. This is basically a testing ground. And then if things are stable, if things are working like they should, eventually they will trickle down into a Linux mainline release. And that is exactly what has happened. And then during this 6.2 merge window, assuming nothing crops up, assuming nothing goes wrong, more of the Rust code is going to be merged. Whether this means that all the Rust code is going to be merged is still to be seen. Some people are saying it is going to be everything, but we might still have to wait like one or two more patch cycles for that to actually happen. But the merge window is currently open, so we are going to have that answer very soon. But regardless of whether all the existing patch sets are going to be merged or not, that doesn't mean the Rust for Linux project is completely over. If you want to keep an eye on what they're doing, head over to their GitHub, keep an eye on the development. If you want to go and test it out, go and submit issues, make pull requests, all of that fun stuff, please go and do so. I'm sure they would appreciate the help. There is still a lot more work that needs to be done. As I mentioned, this is still going to be experimental support, long-term testing still needs to be done, and there's always going to be maintenance and updating and things like that. 
plus getting drivers written in Rust, ready and shipped out to the users. One of those first drivers very likely being the work that Lena is doing under Asahi Linux working on the M1 GPU. It is going to be absolutely hilarious if the first fully Rust driver merged into the kernel is for a completely proprietary system that nobody fully understands. But all of that is a problem for some time in the relatively near future. If right now you want to go and install the 6.1 kernel on your system, what effect is Rust being in the kernel actually going to have? Is it going to be positive? Is it going to be negative? Well, the first question you have to ask is, are you compiling the kernel? Are you running something like Gen 2, maybe a custom kernel? Maybe you're a crazy person using LFS. Well, in all of these cases, there is going to be a little bit of a difference. Now the make file makes reference to Rust C for doing that Rust compilation. And it's going to be like this basically until Rust through GCC is fully ready, and then I expect everything to be done just through GCC. So pretty much all you need right now is an extra tool. I know there has been some concern over Rust increasing the compile time of the kernel, but considering how little Rust code is actually in the kernel and how big the kernel is in C code, that change is going to be basically negligible. But when we roll around to 6.2 and onwards, and we start seeing Rust drivers in the kernel, maybe then there'll be some concern over compile times and compile size. But right now in 6.1, it's not going to make any noticeable difference. But what about for the rest of Linux? The people who just download the binary kernel directly from their package manager. Well, in this case, Nothing changes. Literally nothing whatsoever. Now you just have Rust support in the kernel. But this is not a user-facing change. This change only matters to the developers. If I didn't say this or you didn't hear about this somewhere else, you would have had no idea that Rust support was now in the kernel. It has nothing to do with what you do on a daily basis. I think it's great to discuss the change and the merits of doing so. That's literally what I do on this channel. But at the end of the day, it's not too important to the way you use your system. At least right now. Maybe when there's some Rust drivers that are available that support things you want to be using, like you're using an M1 Mac, for example, then it will actually matter. Now, in most cases, the final kernel release of the year is also made into the LTS release. So it's highly likely the next LTS release is going to have this partial Rust support and the full Rust support is still going to be a long, long way away for those people. But we're still a long way away from Rust drivers anyway, so ultimately it doesn't really matter. But what does matter on the other hand is right now is a really exciting time for Linux. And I'm really happy to be here to bring you these topics, whatever it is related to Wayland, Rust or anything else. I'd be looking up this stuff anyway off camera, so I might as well just record it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Are you a driver developer who's going to make use of Rust? Are you a Rust fanatic? Or are you someone who thinks that bringing Rust to Linux is still a bad idea? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribes, and the pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody on Games. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.